Welcome to Worship from Trinity Shared Ministry in Clearwater and the Church of St. Paul in Barrier, both part of the North Thompson Ecumenical Shared Ministry. From Peace Lutheran Congregation in Vernon, B.C., welcome to worship. Welcome! Welcome to Ascension Lutheran Church in beautiful Nelson, British Columbia. We're really glad you're here. Welcome, Welcome to worship at Faith Lutheran Church in Rutland. On behalf of Hills of Peace Lutheran Church, welcome to church today. Welcome to worship from our Redeemer Lutheran Church. Yeah. Penticton. Welcome, Welcome to worship. To worship. To worship. Oui. Bonjour. Hello. You have heard words of welcome from the congregations of our southern interior region, which are located in a triangle from Barrier Clearwater in the north, Penticton in the southwest, to Nelson in the southeast. All of this region is land that has been traveled, enjoyed, inhabited, and used for thousands of years. It continues to be the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of a number of our Indigenous sisters and brothers, including the Shreshamp, Shushwap, Lakapamux, Thompson, Silks, Okanagan Colville, and Kutanaka, Kutanai or Kutanay peoples. My apologies for the poor pronunciation. A land acknowledgement can be many things, but fundamentally it is an attestation that the land is here and that rather than belonging to individuals with different desires for its uses, it is entrusted to us by God to be used for the common good of everyone. That this can become a source of debate and tension in modernity is understandable, but we need to continue the conversation as we strive to come to common understanding. For with respectful stewardship and action, the land will continue to serve the people who have need of it for generations to come. And so we give thanks on this day for this gift of the land, and we give thanks for the opportunity to gather on it wherever we may find ourselves. And then we gather our thoughts and our hearts for the common praise of praising God hearing God's word and wisdom for this day, and bringing our cares and concerns to God's ear and God's heart. And so we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your Son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your Spirit, and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So it's Trinity Sunday, this Sunday where we've set aside to try to wrap our heads around who is this God that we come to know as Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, Father, Mother, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, how do we, how do we get that this is just one God? You know, one in three, three in one. Well, you know, when I hear the word Trinity, and when I think of Trinity Sunday, the first thing that comes to mind is a particular lecture at the place where I was trained to be a pastor. And it was a lecture all about the Trinity. And you know what it was called? God is a duck. I'm not kidding here. That's exactly what it was called. And the thinking behind it kind of went like this. You watch a duck. You watch a duck in the water. And there they are floating on top of the water. Sometimes it's like you can barely see anything happening. You know that underneath the water there's this thing going with their, with their little webbed feet. But on top, they're smoothly floating on top of the water, right? And then that duck decides, it's time for me to come up onto the land. And so they swim until their little webbed feet get purchase onto the sand, the gravel, the rock, and they start to walk up onto the land. Well, they're no longer quite so graceful, right? Not quite so serene. That word waddle comes to mind as that duck is walking on the land. And then all of a sudden, that same duck, who looked so serene and beautiful as it was floating on the water and then came up onto the land, kind of waddling, decides to fly. And it flaps its wings and it takes off and it's soaring into the sky. And that looks very different, flying from waddling from swimming. Three movements of a duck looking very different, but it's all one duck. So when we think about the Trinity, well, you know, our, our ancient uh, siblings in Christ that lived so very, very long ago, they were trying to wrap their head around this God that they knew they knew 
as the creator. They knew intimately as the creator. But Jesus taught them to even know the creator even more intimately as Abba, Daddy, Father, Mother even, with some of the beautiful images that Jesus would use. And God was the creator, but in Jesus we learned that God was also the one who saves us, saves us from ourselves and helps us to be the very, very best that we can be. And in Jesus, we have this wonderful model, this inspiration of how to be, of how to be able to bring God's dream into this world, God's dream of, of peace and harmony and us all knowing that we are all beloved of God equally and, and how to forgive one another, how we can, you know, break the chains of the mistakes we've made in the past and, and really believe that, yeah, today's a new day as I, I want to do better. I can do better with God's help. And then, yeah, that help is present with what we call the Holy Spirit, that incredible energy, that energy of God that was so alive, that was seen in Jesus, and that even when Jesus was no longer present, ah, that spirit was present. That spirit was promised to always be present with those who believe. So we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, Three in one, one in three, one God that takes so much more than just a word to be able to describe how incredible our God is. And at the end of the day, what it's all about is that God loves you, loves me, loves us all. God is love. Thanks be to God. So let's sing about this incredible love of God that we experience in three different ways, that we come to know in three different ways, and yet it's all the love of our one incredible God. And the song we're going to sing is God Welcomes All. So hear the words. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. And it sounds like this. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. All together, God welcomes all. Strangers and friends, God's love is strong and it never ends. One more time. God welcomes all, strangers and friends, God's love is strong and it never ends. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty. And the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet and with two they flew. And they called to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. 
Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. Worship, Worship the, the Lord, Lord in the beauty of, of holiness. holiness. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. Worship the, the Lord in, in the, the beauty, beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. Worship, Worship the, the Lord, Lord in, in the, the beauty, beauty of, of holiness. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Worship, Worship the, the Lord, Lord in, in the beauty, beauty of, of holiness. holiness. A reading from Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit, bearing witness with our spirit, that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of God. The Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. 
The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you in peace. My name is Pastor Doug Rebley, and I serve as assistant to the bishop in the Eastern Synod. I come to you this day from our Eastern Synod office here in Kitchener, Ontario. Good to be with you. It is my privilege to offer the second sermon in the ELCIC Summon Sermon Series for this year. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. So with that in mind, I share with you these words from Psalm 8, which is one of the assigned psalms for Trinity Sunday. The psalmist writes, O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. It's a good question. Let me say that again. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. Here's another question. Are you familiar with the name Chris Hatfield? I suspect many of you are. He is the Canadian astronaut who, when he was in space, twittered and sang himself into the hearts of our country, young and old alike. Are you familiar with the name Russell Schweiker? I suspect most of you are not. He is an American astronaut who flew on the Apollo 9. After he returned to Earth from his space adventure, he wrote these words, quote, When you are in space, you see the Earth not as something big, but as something small out there. And the contrast between that bright blue and white Christmas tree ornament and the black sky, that infinite universe, really comes through. And the size of it, the significance of it, it is so small <clears throat> and fragile and such a precious little spot in the universe that you can block it with your thumb. And you realize that on that small spot, that little blue and white thing is everything that means anything to you. All of history and music and poetry and art and death and birth and love, all the tears, the joy, all of it on that little spot out there that you can cover with your thumb. It is all a matter of perspective. Is it not? Truth be told, our lives are lived on the basis of our perspectives. The graduates that we honor at this time of year have a perspective that can no doubt be described as on top of the world. And why not? 
They are celebrating a significant accomplishment, whether it's graduating from high school or university or community college, whether they took online courses because of COVID or not. But soon that perspective will change and life will be seen through the nervous eye of someone starting their post-secondary education or from the bottom rung of the job ladder. We all see different things at different times. It's all in the perspective. The story is told of a, of a wealthy man, he made his money in oil, who commissioned Pablo Picasso to paint a portrait of his wife. When the portrait was completed, the man was shocked to see the image that had been created. Well, that looks nothing like my wife. You should have painted her the way she really is. Picasso took a deep breath and said, I'm not sure what that would be. Without hesitation, the man pulled out his wallet and removed a photograph of his wife saying, there, you see, this is how she really is. Picasso, bending over it, looked at it and replied, She is rather small and flat, isn't she? Perspective. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday on the church calendar. The only Sunday set aside during the entire church year to honor a doctrine. As students of the Bible know, the word Trinity is found nowhere in Scripture. But the doctrine of the Trinity comes from a faithful reading of that Scripture with an attempt to give a reasonably adequate understanding of God. We find the Creator God making an entire universe out of nothing but a spoken word. We see God as Redeemer in the person and work of Jesus Christ, God in human flesh. We see God as Sustainer in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. God in three persons, Blessed Trinity, as the hymn writer has it. It is all in the perspective. On this day, a number of preachers will try to explain the ministry of the Trinity about how God, one God, can be known in three persons. I must say, I try to do that myself. I haven't done that for years because I don't know how to explain it. Some will use the illustration of H2O. Depending on the circumstances, we find these same elements in either water or ice or steam some composition of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, but three different ways of experiencing these elements. Or I might say to my wife, Sharon, I am husband, to my sons, I am father, to many others, I am pastor Doug or friend. Same person, but from different perspectives. None of these examples is exactly accurate in explaining this mystery of the Trinity, but suffice it to say, no matter what we say about God, it will never be enough. What we do say will depend upon our perspective. Beyond that, we can let it go with the words of the psalmist, again from Psalm 8, O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Perspective. One more story. I'll be honest, I think Trinity is a storytelling time. Can't explain it, might as well tell a story. A man had an awful day at work. Everything had gone wrong. There was one interruption after another and he was never able to complete his work. When he entered the door that evening, he knew that his husband must have had a similar day. You could see it in his face. So to set the process straight, or perhaps to get the upper hand from his perspective, he began, I have had the worst day of my life. At work, it has been nothing but bad news, bad news, bad news. I don't know what kind of day you've had, but if all possible, can you share some good news with me? His husband, a thoughtful and loving person considered his request for a moment 
and then responded, of course I can. You know how we have four beautiful children? He agreed. Well, he said, three of them didn't break a leg today, and only one is in jail. Perspective. Perspective. Friends, I have a question for you. From what perspective will you view life later today? From what perspective will you view life this coming week? COVID or not, it will make a difference. Through the eyes of the world, it was another brutal murder in a brutal existence. Through the eyes of faith, it was God so loving the world that God gave God's only Son so that all might live. John 3.16 from today's Gospel reading for Holy Trinity Sunday. It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, Saul of Tarsus was another religious fanatic bent on terrorism. Through the eyes of faith, Saul would become Paul, the writer of 1 Corinthians. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, those who are poor and hungry and sick and imprisoned and vulnerable are a burden. Through the eyes of faith, they are our sisters and our brothers. The people of God who we are called to love and to serve and to do it in word and actions in the most clear and caring and loving and just ways we can. It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, we are too small and powerless to make a difference. Through the eyes of faith, we know that when we go into the world this coming week and in the weeks to follow, we do not go alone. We go with each other and our God goes with us and that is power. It's all a matter of perspective. Through the eyes of the world, you and I are unbelievably insignificant, just one of seven billion plus. Through the eyes of faith, we are incredibly important. God knows us so intimately that even the hairs of our head are numbered. My dear friends in Christ, how will you see things today? How will you see things tomorrow? How do you live your life? Through the eyes of the world? through the eyes of faith. Remember, it's all in the perspective. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We believe in God, robed in splendor, veiled in mystery, ruler alike of darkness and light. We encounter God in Jesus Christ, who was tortured and put to death, but whose radiance could not be quenched, whose touch brings a blaze of color to a drab, dull world, receiving the weary, healing the wounded, and dazzling the satisfied. We walk with God, guided by the light of God's loving spirit, who enters the shadowed places of our hearts and leads us into truth and life. We wait for God and the fulfillment of God's promises for the time when the darkness will hold no fear and the light will no longer blind, but creation will be made whole once more and God's peace will reign forever. Amen. Amen. Let us come before the Triune God in prayer with the words, God of love, you are invited to respond. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit to do your delight in this world. God of love, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder, Help us to care for creation as if our life depended on it. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, all work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for India and the COVID crisis that is challenging and heartbreaking for so many. Help us to ensure vaccine equity for all. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Hear our prayers for those we name silently and aloud. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all the congregations of the BC Synod, Southern Interior Region. Hills of Peace in Kamloops, Deo in Salmon Arm, Ascension in Nelson, North Thompson Shared Ministry in Barrier and Clearwater, Peace in Vernon, Our Redeemer in Penticton, Faith in Kelowna, Christ in Kelowna. That the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. God of love, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. Be with and embrace those who die this day. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of violence and war. God of love, hear our prayer. Be with us as we live our mission as a community of Christians, empowered by the grace of God through word and sacrament, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of the Trinity is uproar and color, dissent and challenge, wandering and exile, invitation and inclusion drawing our bodies and spirits into the riotous harmony 
of God. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us offer ourselves to God. We pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, our risen and ascended Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we give thanks for the gift of the word of God. We pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Witness forgiveness through the cross. Witness life to those entombed by death. Witness the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be glory and honor forever. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples. As we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As tender as parent is to child, so gentle is God with us. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for us. As far as east is from west, so far God removes our sin, renewing our lives in Christ. The Holy Three Holy One, 
bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.